Welcome to my channel. My name is Sam from The Beauty In It Reseller and I am a part-time reseller on eBay and Poshmark. And today I figured I would do a little bit more of a vloggy type video, but we're going to start with what sold in the past week. And I'm gonna run through what I made from it, um, what my net profit was, how much shipping was and fees, so that you get a better understanding of what kind of goes into selling on these platforms. So the first item that I sold is a gun PC game and I picked up a whole bunch of PC games in the summer, a big lot, and this is one of the remaining games that sold. So it wasn't a high value game, but altogether that lot has been really profitable for me. This one sold for $7.99 and the buyer paid $5 in shipping. The cost of goods on this was $0.60, cents, and with shipping and fees, it was $5.90. So my total profit on this was $6.49, and it took 257 days to sell. The next item was from my TJ Maxx Yellow Tag Clearance Haul. I had picked up this Eileen Fisher peach cardigan. I did think it would be a great spring type of piece because of the color and it was a blend of wool silk and cashmere so super soft really pretty and i ended up making an offer for 99 dollars, and the buyer paid 767 in shipping on poshmark poshmark has actually updated their shipping cost so it was previously 745 and it has increased because of usps they've also increased their prices so the buyer did pay slightly more in shipping than previously. The cost of goods on this one was $39 and with shipping and fees it was $27.47. So my total profit was $32.53 and it took 49 days for it to sell. Also from the Yellow Tag Clearance event, I had picked up this Seven for All Mankind faux leather dress. It was really pretty, really cool. I thought it was super unique. And I'm actually finding that Seven for All Mankind is not a brand that is highly sought after for anything other than jeans, but I do think the style of this was so unique. I did end up returning another item that I had picked up from the Yellow Tag Clearance event from Seven for All Mankind, so I don't think it's a brand that I will continue to pick up uh, unless I see a really good price on it. But this did sell. It sold for $60. The buyer had made an offer for $60 and paid $7.67 in shipping. The cost of goods was $25, so it was a little bit more pricey. And with shipping and fees, it was $19.67. So my total profit on this one was $23, and it took 49 days to sell. One piece that has been in my closet for a while that really got a lot of attention, a lot of likes on Poshmark, a lot of watchers on eBay, was this All That Jazz um, jumpsuit. It was a vintage piece and I think this is a brand that people are looking for so if you do come across all that jazz when you're out thrifting I would definitely look at comps see if you can find the, if the piece is selling or not. This a buyer offered $42 and I accepted and they paid $7.67 in, sh in shipping. The cost of goods was $6 at Goodwill and with shipping and fees, it was $16.07. So my total profit was $27.60. And this one took 103 days to sell, which was kind of surprising based on how much traction it was getting in engagement. However, I think with it kind of moving more into spring weather, I do think this was more of a spring and summer piece. So I guess it makes sense. The next item that sold was one from my personal closet. And when I'm selling items from my personal closet, I don't mind taking a smaller profit just because I'm really just cleaning out my closet and if it's in good condition, I don't mind selling it um, and making less than I would for the types of pieces that I will source. Uh, and so I sold an anklet that actually is vintage. It's one that I wore back in the early 2000s, so I'm happy that that trend is really coming back into play. <laughs> And this sold for $6 and the buyer did pay shipping, which at the time was $7.45. The 
the cost of goods was zero and with shipping and fees it was ten forty. So my total profit on this one was three dollars and five cents, which again it's not much, but I'm sure I didn't spend that much on it back in the early 2000s, so I think it's okay. I had another buyer offer, and this was for the, I had a Reformation gingham print mini skirt, and the buyer offered $45, and I've gotten some really low ball offers on this skirt. I do think it's kind of a trendy piece for uh, more youthful buyers, and so what I see is when I do have more youthful buyers, I do end up getting lower offers just because they probably don't have as much money, they're not um, working, or they're in college and they just want a much better price, which is fair, I, I get that. Um, but I was kind of tired of getting really low ball offers on this skirt, so I did end up accepting 45 and the buyer paid 745 in shipping. The cost of goods was 25 so it was a little bit more steep and with shipping and fees it was $16.45. So I only profited $11 but it only took 25 days to sell and like I said I just <laughs> was kind of tired of getting low ball offers on a reformation piece so I'm happy with that profit and I may stick more towards dresses for reformation and stick away from some of the other pieces that I've picked up. I don't tend to make quite as much profit on jeans or skirts. So that is something I'm gonna be mindful of as I continue sourcing Reformation. Next, I sold this Abercrombie button-down shirt. It's one that I picked up. I don't have Goodwill bins or an outlet around me, but there has been a pop-up shop that my local resource has held with clothes. And it's kind of a similar style where you can kind of dig through um, they have like liquidation pallets full of clothes and so this was one item that I picked up. It sold, another buyer had made an offer for $20 and paid $7.45 in shipping. The cost of goods, unlike Goodwill, it is more, it's technically a set price per the, the type of item that you're purchasing. However, I've gone and if I've picked up a lot of stuff, they've reduced that price a bit. but. I don't think I picked up too many items when I had gone this time, so it was $2, and with shipping and fees it was $11.45, so my total profit was $14, which I think is really great for a button-down shirt from Abercrombie. I do think they're having a little bit of a comeback, so it is a brand that I will look out for, especially if it is dresses and more of those types of pieces. This took 63 days to sell. The next piece that I sold was this Taylor Swift uh, pair of dice <laughs> and uh, they do go along with the lyrics to one of her songs and she released a Valentine's Day collection that sold out really quickly so I think a lot of buyers are looking for the pieces from that collection and so I sold this for $199 with free shipping on eBay. The cost of goods was $35 I only picked up one set of dice, so I'm a little sad about that, but I am glad that they sold for a great price. The cost of shipping and fees was $34.95, so my total profit on this was $129.05, and they took 29 days to sell. Next thing I sold was a set of sample pieces from Liz Earl. I love <laughs> the Liz Earl um, Cleanse and Polish. Um, kind of face wash. It's like a balm and whenever you buy from the Liz Earl website they if you buy in a certain amount they'll send you free samples and that is really the only product that I use by Liz Earl so I ended up listing the samples that I got because it is a very pricey brand and the set of three sold for $12.99 plus $5 in shipping on eBay. The cost of goods was zero and with shipping and fees, it was $6.94. So my total profit on this was $11.05, which pays for about half of a cleanse and polish. And it took 127 days to sell. I finally sold one of the Sunny Set um, combo pieces from Free People. It was an item that I picked up from Liquidation, so I'll link that video. And it was the 
the item that I thought would be most popular, but this is actually the first one that sold. So not a great buy and I probably won't pick up any more Free People liquidation. I think Free People is kind of on the outs and so I'm sure that I will sell all of the pieces that I picked up from liquidation, but I do think I'll probably be holding on to some of them for quite a while. Um, the buyer had accepted an offer from my Posher VA for $58 and I had set free shipping on that item. The cost of goods was $20.48 and with shipping and fees it was $19.05. So my total profit was $18.47 but this first one took 56 days to sell and I still have a bunch more so Hopefully as we approach summer and spring weather where it's a little bit warmer, people are more willing to buy shorts. Um, and so with that, the next thing that I sold was also from that liquidation palette. It was a pair of the Cozy Girl shorts and that was also, I think, the first of the shorts that I sold as well. And again, it was an offer from my Posher VA that the buyer had accepted for $19.00. And for this one, the shipping was $5.95, which is the shipping offer that my Posher VA also sends. And the cost of goods was $8.36, and with shipping and fees, it was $11.25. So my total profit was $5.34, and again, that also took 56 days to sell. So yeah, I'm not super happy with those that liquidation palette. Um, I have sold a few of the harem pants, so those are doing much better than the other two items that I picked up. But I again, I think over time things will sell and I'll make a good profit. But right now, the cost of goods is so high on that. I spent, I think, around $1,500 for the three items. And so... Yeah, I'm hoping that picks up as the warmer weather rolls in. Next item I sold was from my Lululemon haul from Style Encore. It was the daily practice zip-up jacket, and the buyer had made an offer of $45, which, again, I'm trying not to hold on to things. February has been a really slow month for me, so I am accepting offers right now just because I do want to keep sales going and not hoard a whole bunch of items. And so they offered $45 and paid $7.45 in shipping. The cost of goods was $25.60 and with shipping and fees it was $16.45. So my total profit was a little bit lower than I was hoping for at $10.40 but I'll take 1040 and start to clear out my inventory and hopefully March performs a little bit better than February has been so far. And that jacket took 28 days to sell. One item that sold really well that I will definitely continue to look for as I go out sourcing is a Jenny Yu bridesmaids dress. And my Posher VA had sent an offer for $148 and $5.95 in shipping. The cost of goods was $18 from the eBay haul that I had done, the eBay arbitrage haul. And so with shipping and fees, it was $37.05. So my total profit on this was $98.90, which is amazing. And it took 21 days to sell. What I love about bridesmaids dresses is that a lot of weddings nowadays will have just a specific color and the bride will allow the bridesmaids to pick out whatever style they want. So I do find that as long as you're buying from brands that are still relevant and you're buying colors that they still have on their website, that you can still sell older styles of bridesmaid dresses. So I will definitely source David's Bridal, Jenny Yu, Azazi, um, what else is there? Just any of those online retailers that do kind of have a wide variety of styles in specific colors. And Jenny Yu in particular is one that is also sold at times on the Beholden line. And that is also another kind of brand or kind of category that people are looking for. So Jenny Yu gets a big thumbs up for me and I will definitely keep an eye out for that brand going forward.
Next up we have a pair of trouser, kind of like stretchy jogger trousers from Michael Stars, which is not normally a brand that I would source. However, they were in really good condition and I picked them up for a dollar from the uh, Lululemon haul I had mentioned earlier. My Style Encore was also having a $1 clearance event at that time. So I did end up sourcing it. My Posture VA sent out an offer for $14.95 in shipping. The cost of goods was $1 and with shipping and fees it was $10.40. So I profited $8.55, which is really fair for a Michael Stars piece, and it took 27 days to sell. This next piece was an interesting one. I had sourced it from ThreadUp when I was trying to kind of buy from assorted brands, and I had picked this up because it was 100% silk, and ThreadUp did not have the brand on it, and I had kind of looked on using Google Lens to see if it was a piece that had a really well-known brand and I can't remember if I did end up finding what it was. I did pick it up and I did get quite a bit of traction on it. I was getting likes on Poshmark and watchers on eBay but I do think because it's a less well-known brand that it was sitting for a little bit so I ended up sending out an offer on Poshmark for $60 with free shipping. The cost of goods was $30.53 and with shipping and fees it was $19.45 so I did only end up profiting $10.02 but I did also receive positive feedback on this item so that's always a, a win as well and it did take 90 days to sell. I don't know that I would pick up this brand again but I'm honestly not sure I'll ever see it again. It's a London. Um, but yeah, it, it was a nice piece and I think if I wanted to wait, I probably could have made more money. However, like I said, February has been really slow for me, so I was trying to just move some inventory out. The next piece that I sold is a Lily Pulitzer Sloan maxi dress and this was one that I picked up from the uh, Lily Pulitzer event at my local Style Encore and I had ended up making an offer for $80 in free shipping. It was a piece that I didn't really think would sell well and I picked it up inadvertently thinking that I got a much lower cost of goods than I did. So I kind of just wanted it gone within the two weeks that uh, Style Encore uh, allows for a return and my thought was that if I didn't sell it within the two weeks that I would return it. So I ended up sending an offer for $80 and free shipping. The cost of goods was $31 and with shipping and fees it was $23.45. So even though it was the piece that I thought would sell, would be least likely to sell, it um, I ended up making $25.55 from it within 11 days. <laughs> That's the items that have sold within the last week. Not my best week and I, I'm Definitely would love to know. Leave a comment below if you've noticed any changes in your sales over the last month. I do know that for Poshmark there was a lot of controversy around the change in the algorithm and the way that it was showing buyers results within the search mechanism and I totally understand that and I did know what the strategy would be to be more successful with that algorithm, to be a little less keyword focused within the title and kind of just explain what the item is in a succinct and quick way for buyers who are looking for that. And as many other YouTubers have said who sell on Poshmark, that's just not a great experience for the seller or the buyer when I was looking up comps, I would look for something using the keywords that a buyer would use if they were looking for an item <laughs> and I could not find the items and I would end up switching the the way that it was sorted to kind of the older style which was just shared or using relevant instead of the, what is it? They had some other kind of um, way to sort. 
and those were giving me better results. So clearly <laughs> something was not working, which after as many people kind of said to Poshmark, this is not right, then they ended up reverting it. So I did see a little bit of a difference between the two, but for me, Poshmark has been okay. Really, this the um, platform that's not been doing well for me is eBay. And it's really surprising to me because I haven't really changed anything. I'm still listing at least one to two things a day. And I am listing more clothes, so I'm assuming that is why I'm seeing a difference in my sales. But I would go from selling at least one or two things a day to going weeks at a time without making any sales on eBay. From what I just said in the what sold in the last week, it's been, I think, two sales that were from eBay, and that's just not normal. So, I don't know. Let me know in, your, in the comments if you're seeing any issues with eBay. If you are more of a seller on eBay, usually I make more sales or about 50-50. So, for me, this has been really weird. And, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure why that's happening, if it's just a trend of it being February. I know that February is... A month where a little bit less sales happen just because of consumer behavior people are kind of just holed up in their home they're not going out as much and just with everything going on in the world right now <laughs> there's so many reasons why sales could be slow so I don't want to make any drastic changes to what I'm doing until I know better why this might ha be happening but yeah leave a comment below and if you are new and you liked this content, I would love it if you could subscribe. I am trying to grow my channel. I <laughs> hit a milestone. I have over 100 subscribers now, which is cool. And um, so yeah, I would love it if you could give this video a like and subscribe for more content like this. All right, so I took some pictures and then I ended up taking Hallie for a walk. It snowed here, so <laughs> I'll throw in some footage of that. So fun in the snow she loves to bury herself but now I am going to continue taking pictures and I also need to clean up a little bit basically whenever I take pictures there's a little bit of a <laughs> avalanche after that I need to put things away and get the location of where I put them into my spreadsheet so this is where we are at right now I have a bunch of things up here that I need to put away a little pile down here of items and I need to break down this box and get it out of this room because there's really not that much room here and then I really do want to continue taking pictures while I still have some sunlight as you can see this room <laughs> has a sunroof so I'm able to get some pictures going so that is my next step I've decided not to source until I'm able to get a thousand dollars in profit right now I've been sourcing really heavily this year so far and the way that I count my cost of goods for accounting purposes is within the time that I purchased the item rather than when it sold so I'm actually nine hundred dollars in the hole right now which means that I've spent probably um, around four thousand dollars this year on new items and they have not been selling super quickly which is never a good thing um so basically i have plenty of items that can sell i have a lot of items in my death pile and so rather than continue sourcing each weekend like i would typically do i've been taking it easy the last couple weeks until i am up 900 I actually just bought a new camera, which you're watching right now, 
and that was $700 so I am including that cost within my spreadsheet so it's not really so bad I'm not so far behind however I do want to get in a much better position financially before I source more items especially since the clothes that I've been picking up are a higher cost than I have in the past and so it really adds up quickly so if you are considering starting to sell on eBay or Poshmark, keep that in mind is you want to keep close track of how your finances are and what you're spending, what you're making, and kind of how that all accounts together. So taking a little bit of a break on sourcing and trying to get through my death pile and get things listed. All right, I am done for the day. It's been a long Saturday, so I am ready to rest and have a good rest of my day. And so if you watched this far, leave a comment below. Let me know again about the eBay issues if you've seen anything. If you like this content, I would love it if you could subscribe, and I will catch you on the next one. Bye!